chestnuts roasting by an open fire, fingers bleeding in the sink. Everybody loves chestnuts, or a lot of people do, uh, except the people who have had bad experiences with them in one way or another. One of the ways people have learned to hate chestnuts is when they slice their fingers trying to get into them. For thousands of years, the only way to peel a chestnut has been to cut an X and then roast it so that the sides peel back and then peel it. And the instructions always are, cut an X on the flat side. In most houses, you don't have a special chestnut knife. You have to use a paring knife. They make special chestnut knives every place that chestnuts grow, both in the Orient and in Europe. They've got a little curved hook on them. They're easy to find pictures of on the web. Uh, and chances are you don't have one anyway. So this is the thing. You have to cut all the way through the sides uh, for a couple of different reasons. One is to get the peel up so that you can actually get a hold of something eventually to peel it after it's roasted. Here is a lovely X. One of the reasons for the X is to prevent the nut from exploding, which they will do. They will blow up like a baked potato if the steam inside cannot get out during the roasting process. Uh, so uh, the other thing is it lets you get a hold of it. But uh, there's a wonderful chance for you to cut your fingers. They tell you cut an X on the flat side of the nut, but in fact in China chestnuts are actually proverbial as being neither flat nor round. To say something is like a chestnut is to say that it isn't either this or that. Every bag of chestnuts you will ever buy or see there are going to be nuts that are not flat-sided. Uh, and that is when you start chopping your fingers. The concept of uh, cutting the X in the nut is ancient. Grandmothers have taught their grandchildren how to cut an X in the chestnut. And it's just become tradition that this is the way you do it. Um, that's actually one of our specialties here at Badger Set Farm is figuring out ways to do things that are not traditional and I set out specifically to find a new way to get into a chestnut which sounds like it ought to be very simple but it took a little thinking and a fair amount of familiarity with the nuts. So this is what we do now. The first thing you do is cut the nuts in half. We use a chef's knife on a cutting board it's very straightforward. You simply get the nut, hold it down on the cutting board, and cut it straight in half. You want a sharp knife. A dull knife is not your friend. A sharp knife will actually be likely to cut your fingers far less Doing this on a cutting board is very straightforward. That is the total of the involvement of the knife and the chestnut. Cut them in half. Uh, this can be done really quite rapidly once you get used to the whole concept. It's kind of like cutting carrots, uh, in fact, except that you can't chop right down the carrot. You have to position each nut get a hold of it with a knife and chop it in half. One of the advantages here is that you can see any bad nuts. One of the complaints people have about chestnuts is that frequently when you buy them at the grocery store many of them can be bad. That's not a problem of the chestnut, that's a problem of the supplier. Uh, I will tell you that we know that some people sell bad chestnuts on purpose because they think they can get away with it. But there are a lot of people growing chestnuts in the U.S. now and Canada, and uh, 
in general, if you know where your chestnuts come from and you have a grower who cares about it and a grocer who cares about it, you can buy excellent fresh chestnuts pretty much anywhere these days. You just have to look for them a little bit. But even the best chestnuts, every once in a while, just like peanuts or almonds or pecans, every once in a while there will be one that is not right. And if that's so, you can see them here immediately and get them out. Okay, what we're going to do with these now is parboil them. Parboiling is very simple. Uh, this is our wood stove. We heat with wood, cook with wood. You want to have your water at a rolling boil. And when it is, lift the lid. Pop the chestnuts in and bring it back to a rolling boil again and you're done. That's it and they're ready for the peeling process. This uh, here with this relatively good wood fire it'll probably take all of a minute and a half or so to bring the nuts up. Uh, the nuts are substantial it takes a while to get them hot. It's been about two minutes and you have steam coming back out of the pot again. They are ready at this point. Get a slotted spoon and get them out of there. Now if you're doing a big batch or batches uh, then you can easily just put your next batch of chestnuts into this boiling water and they can be parboiling while you are peeling your first batch. Working in medium-sized batches is a good way to do this uh, because the whole process works much better if the chestnuts are at the right temperature. When chestnuts chill after the parboiling process, they become difficult to peel again. So you want to do this while they are warm. Okay, now you want these nuts to cool ever so slightly so you can handle them. What we're going to do is take a pair of small spring-loaded pliers as the tool to pop the nuts out of the shells. And which plier you use is purely a matter of personal choice. The spring-loaded feature makes it easier uh, to work with by far. And you... <laughs> they come out very easily. <laughs> <laughs> some of the nuts if you are watching the the whole thing here some of the nuts actually came out of their shells in the parboil bath uh, so you don't have to peel those at all but what you're doing now is grab the peel with the pliers and squeeze and they just pop out the skin stays in the shell, at least with uh, uh, most of these nuts it does. There are some kinds of nuts, some of the European nuts, there may be some skin that stays stuck in the nut meat itself. But for most American grown nuts, this is it. They just pop out. There was one that had a black spot on it, which we just assumed that monkey with. In fact, a little bit of black color on the outside of the chestnut may not mean any problem with the flavor at all, particularly at this time of the year, uh, but it's up to you uh, as to whether you do it. You have to decide whether this nut is good enough for your cooking or not. One of the things to do with the nuts that may look a little questionable is eat them. You'll find out. This goes very rapidly once you are used to the whole process and it is a matter of very little effort to simply get all of your nuts prepared for whatever you're going to do next. Now these nuts at this point are not really cooked. They are parboiled, they are ever so slightly cooked, but uh, at this point if you're putting them into stuffing, you may want to parboil them a little bit longer until the nut meat starts to get soft. They're crunchy like carrots still at this point. Or you can actually roast them in the oven on a cooking sheet 
at about 350 degrees or so and that also works you want to watch out if you are oven roasting peeled chestnuts uh, it's relatively easy to roast them to the point where they are starting to get dry dried chestnuts get hard uh, very hard uh, as hard as a dry soup bean eventually and you don't want to be doing that And what do you do with the shells? Um, these are kind of soggy right now, but actually what we always do with our shells is we let them finish drying, and they'll dry pretty quickly because they're hot from being parboiled. And when they are dry, when you toss them in your fire, they crackle in a very nice, crackly, cozy way. Either that or you can compost them, of course. Now, we're going to try the same process with some pure European Italian nuts, just to show you that it works with Italians as well. Now this is a halved Italian chestnut and that dark color that you're seeing there is the skin of the chestnut that has been folded down inside the nut meat. That's one of the curses of chestnut peeling uh, and it can sometimes be a problem even with our process. We think our uh, American and Chinese hybrid chestnuts don't have the skin folded in like this. They always peel absolutely clean. Uh, any European nut and any Japanese nut may have skin folded into the nut meat, which slows things down. But as you'll see when they get parboiled, uh, it's still much easier with the parboiled peeling process. Okay, our Italian nuts are parboiled and they peel. Usually they peel. Every once in a while you'll get one where the skin sticks in the inside and then you have to kind of get in there with your fingernails or whatnot and scrape it out. Um, or a nut pick actually, oddly enough, can be useful to get that skin out of there. The hybrids and the Chinese don't have this problem. If you go to an oriental food store, they may or may not have fresh chestnuts. If they do, they're probably from either China or Korea. Nope, we got a bad one there, uh, which happens. And the temperature of the nuts is critical to making this happen. The cooler they are, the stickier they get. So you want to do this when they are hot. If you get a couple of sticky ones in a row, you may want to toss them back in the parboil and get them warmed up. Now, to anybody who has ever sliced their fingers open peeling chestnuts, that is a beautiful sight. Now, you don't always want to be halving your chestnuts, uh, although if you're doing any kind of cooking or preparation, this is by far the easiest way to do it. If you absolutely have to have whole chestnut meats, there is another technique that does not involve that silly X. Don't ever cut that silly X again.